Welcome to the Thursday, June 28th, 2012 edition of Erner Berry's Daily Video, sponsored by Eastern Poultry and Food Distributors. In today's video, our latest market research report digs into some pertinent middle meat trends, and later, hog features and spot values could be setting up a memorable summer for the industry. Now let's look at the market with your host, Jamie Chadwick. The World Trade Organization said it will investigate Indian restrictions on U.S. poultry imports, which Washington has claimed are unscientific. Okay. Nope. In a meeting on June 25th, the dispute we'll settlement body again. of the WTO we'll accepted the U.S.'s that, request that for that panel on that India's that ban on imports of poultry meat and chicken eggs from the country. Just so you can see how close Restrictions had been imposed by New Delhi on poultry right, products from countries reporting outbreak of low-intensity right, bird flu, yeah, hoping to grab the country's growing market for chicken legs. In March, the U.S. requested talks at the WTO on the ban, which was introduced in 2007 due to fears over avian influenza. Last month, the U.S. tabled a request for taking the case to court, which was approved at their meeting on Monday. U.S. Trade Representative Ron Kirk's office accuses India of ignoring scientific evidence, while the Department of Agriculture says low pathogenic... Uh, I just wanted to go over these notes again. Sorry. While the while the Department of Agriculture says low pathogenic bird flu causes minor illness, poses no risk to human health, and sometimes manifests no clinical signs. For more on the WTO's investigation on Indian restrictions of U.S. poultry imports and for other news in the food service industry, please visit foodmarket.com. Now, Erner Berry pork market reporter Russell Barton analyzes how a widespread between future and spot hog values may be a cause for concern. On June 22nd, a relatively unusual occurrence was seen in the hog market. Livestock values exceeded their futures values by $12 per hundredweight, a gap only seen a handful of times in the last decade. This factor alone may be mention worthy, although the real story lies in what happens directly after such a divergence is formed. To begin, it is important to note that at the end of a given contract period for CME lean hogs, the value of the contract has to meet that of the spot price for settlement. In a normal market scenario, the case in which spot exceeds futures is termed as backwardation, and futures would tend to move upward before settlement in order to correct the divergence. However, this year we have seen production cuts result in a prematurely rocketing live hog market, which nearly reached the all-time highs seen last year. Given relatively lackluster domestic and questionable overseas demand as we move through the summer, it seems more likely that live hogs would decrease in value faster than their futures would ascend prior to settlement. Since 2001, each time that the spot price, depicted in blue on the chart, has exceeded that of the futures by $10 per hundredweight or more, the spot price has dropped dramatically in the ensuing weeks and months. In addition, these outliers have always occurred in mid to late August, which coincides with the usual seasonal market top for live hog values. This time around, however, we are seeing this unique condition met in late June, something that hasn't occurred in at least the past 12 years. The implications are fairly clear moving forward, although we are treading in uncharted water, so the eventual outcome is difficult to determine. In addition, we're heading into a holiday following massive gains in wholesale values, which has spurred recent uncertainty over pork featuring for the remainder of summer. One thing is certain, this summer is setting up to be a memorable one and likely more dependent than ever on exports. Thanks for us. To wrap up today's video, Erner Berry Red Meat Market Reporter A.J. Munger reports on the seasonality of middle meats utilizing map correlations. In the last market research installment, we took a look at the historical price relationships between end cuts and the rest of the beef complex. For this report, we'll switch gears to focus on middle meats to see how their changes in price relationships compare over time. Middle meats, by nature, are much more seasonal than end cuts, particularly for choice and higher grade product. Ribs tend to gain more seasonal strength as Christmas approaches and the market generally reaches its seasonal peak in the last two weeks of November. Loin meat, on the other hand, trades a bit differently than ribs. While the tenderloin market is similar to the ribs in that it gains much of its seasonal strength in late fall approaching the holidays, strip loins and short loins generally peak in mid-spring and can remain at elevated levels for a good portion of the spring and summer. Taking a look at the heat map, the seasonal strength of the middle shows up in their lack of correlation with both cattle and the cutout. Ribs show a bit more correlation than strips and short loins, especially when removing 
between 2008 and 2009, both non-seasonal years in the cattle market. This makes for an interesting point. Because the ribs show more correlation with live cattle prices, it doesn't necessarily mean they are more dependent on input prices compared to the strip and short loin. A more plausible explanation would be that the seasonality of the rib market follows the seasonality of the cattle market more closely, particularly in the fall when both markets generally trend higher. Thanks, AJ. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. This broadcast is sponsored by Eastern Poultry and Food Distributors, wholesalers of poultry, beef, pork, and seafood since 1954. Visit them online at epoultry.com.